Hi, I'm Margaret Ann from Tech Hub. I'm sitting down today with James from KM Capital, and we are here to do a rapid fire round on questions with ABC on COVID 19. So, James, thanks so much for joining us. Going to Thank just jump much. straight yeah, in. Really, 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 pleased to, really pleased to be here. Uh, sorry for just talking over you then. No, no. <laughs> but let's just jump straight in. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so what advice do you have for, start for founders who are looking to raise this spring, either as a seed round or as a follow-on round? Uh, I think that's going to be, I think it's a difficult time to be doing that. I think you probably have to revisit your valuation expectations if you may have had any before all this, uh, before mm -hmm. the world changed. Um, I would look for support from your existing cap table, even if that's to kind of at least anchor something and then that kind of allows you to take that out to the rest of the market once you've got a little bit of support from your, from your existing cap table. I think there'll be a lot of that. I think a lot, there'll be a lot of rounds done internally or started internally. Uh, so I'd say maybe revise your expectations of what valuation you might get um, and just lean on your existing cap table to, to start you off. Okay. And how many months would you suggest uh, founders look to raise for now? In, in this period, I think that's really difficult. I, I think it's difficult to put kind of a, a timescale on things. I would say time is of the essence really i'd say if you think that you're going to be needing cash we don't really know how long this situation will go on for depending on to, depending on the extent to which your demand is, is affected uh, and affected like long term after that all this ends i would i would err on the side of running a quick process trying to collect um commitments as they come in if you can maybe raising on a convertible note which is removes the need to price anything and just take some of the initial work and therefore time out of the out of the process so i'd okay. recommend doing those things okay um and as you invest in a lot of like consumer facing good startups how are how have you seen them uh, weather the crisis it's completely mixed bag i think they're quite divergent i think anyone that already had a kind of a direct consumer presence if you like especially in fmcg has probably done reasonably well out of this um mm -hmm. you know you don't want to be insensitive and it's an insensitive thing to say i guess but um, some companies are, are performing, I've seen like an uptick in, in demand uh, through this. Others, so for example, we invest in a business called Beer52. It, it delivers beer to people's home addresses on subscription. Um, all the pubs are shut, so that's one of the few places you can get beer at the minute. Um, so they've done well. On the other hand, there's businesses that uh, demand has just kind of completely fallen off a cliff. Like there's a, a travel tech business we invest in. It does, it does tours across major global cities. Um, and demand for that obviously has just totally dried up. So I think you need to go into survival mode. You need to be severe. You need to really batten down the hatches um, and just try to extend your burn rate as, as, as long as you possibly can and make sure you're making use of any reliefs, any grants, any government backed funding you can, you can, uh, you can get your hands on at the minute. And actually that leads me perfectly to my next question. Um, with the new government scheme for startups, are you looking to close any rounds uh, with startups in the near future? Uh, we might be. Um, I, think, I think we need a bit more information on the, uh, on the, on the future fund. I think, I think it's great that it, that it exists, you know, and it's really good that it has kind of, the startup world has kind of central government support. I think the term sheet they released gave a lot of detail away, but I think we need a bit more to understand quite how this works for founders. I read a, I read a, a note from C Legals on this who said this is, you know, don't touch this with a barge pole. This is very investor friendly. I've seen a lot of chat around investor friendly terms creeping into term sheets a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we need a bit more clarity on this. But it's great. Personally, I think it's great that the government sits up and thinks, okay, all this work and all this subsidy, all these subsidies and tax breaks we've done to to help get money into startups. I think it's great that that the extent to which that is damaged by this crisis, it's great that it's been offset a little bit by this scheme. Yeah, um, and as you touched on a little bit before with uh, certain startups, um, kind of their their market completely drying up overnight, are you experiencing um, kind of a dip in valuation of the startups? And then if so, is that impacting the um, kind of the size of return that you're looking for for investments that you're gonna be um, that you're going to be starting in the near future? I think valuations will drop. I think I read a report today which went back and looked at 2008 and maybe maybe 2001 and 2008 and I think they said valuations dropped between 
25% and 40% and never recovered for two or three years, I don't think. Or that maybe that was round sizes, but there were similar stats on both sides. So I think valuations will be will be impacted. And I, I mean, I spoke to a business uh, maybe two weeks ago that was due to be out raising on a 12 million, raising three money at 12 million pre, and they were trying to close 500 grand at two, two million pre money. So there will, there's no doubt there'll be some valuations kind of slashed. I think if you're yeah. the real outlying high performing companies that people are competing over, I don't think you'll be affected. I think your valuation will still just tick up and for the competition to invest in certain businesses. But for a lot, a lot of investors will be expecting now uh, to see a, a reduction in, in valuations, yeah. Um, have you seen a decrease in, in deal flow on your end of startups looking to raise? Um, I'd probably say no, actually. There's maybe fewer kind of intermediaries and these kind of deal makers that are in the ecosystem, you know, people who will manage your raise. I've not seen too much from, from people like that right now, actually. Um, but there's still plenty of companies out there, you know, um, other, other funds are still kind of sending stuff our way. Um, accelerators, incubators, we're still kind of getting stuff from. People are still wanting pitch, uh, virtual pitch sessions. I don't think I've seen a reduction. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say there's been a reduction at all. Um, no, I think, and I think another point to make is, it's probably important for founders just to realize how your fund that you're targeting is, is funded itself. You know, mm -hmm. there's plenty of funds who've just closed out, closed out a raise themselves. They have plenty of another strange VC term, which is dry powder, uh, which means they have cash available to invest still. They've raised a fund. So there's plenty of them out there. On the other hand, there might be family offices who, you know, have interest in lots of listed stock and doing venture investing for them might be more of a nice to have than a core part of their business. So I think as a founder, it's important to see how your target funders are funded themselves. If that makes That's, sense? Yeah. Um, and last question, are you looking to close any investments in the near future? Are you still investing in new startups? Or are you just doing carry on rounds for prior investments? We're, we're, still, we're still investing, we're still looking for business. I'm, I'm caveating that. I mean, we're probably moving a little bit slower than we ordinarily would just because of where we all are. Like we're all working remotely. There's a couple of other businesses that we're connected to um, who are affected differently than we are, but we're still, we're still talking to people. I think in reality, it might be, um, we might make six or seven investments this year, whereas we were targeting um, eight or nine, 10 maybe. Um, but I don't think that's unusual at all for the industry. Yeah. So we're still talking to people, still starting a process. Uh, yeah, okay. I think I think I think there's still great people out there, you know, great yeah. founders out there, great businesses. So yeah. And actually, one last question: uh, What's the best way for founders to get in touch with you? Uh, through the online form on our website, or by emailing james at km-capital.co.uk. Just drop me an email, add me on LinkedIn. Just that's that's just the best way. We try and speak to as many people as possible, and always have some feedback one way or the other. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Really nice to speak to you. Hope, hope it was helpful. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.